There have been many important milestones in 3D imaging recently, including a new one that just happened. The developers at Mesh Anything just released code for a new version that works in a very smart way. In this context, the word mesh refers to a representation of the surface of a 3D object, like the way skin covers the body. A mesh can capture fine details like bumps and contours, and it can stretch, wrinkle, and move. From a computational standpoint, it's made up of vertices, edges, and faces, where vertices are like corner points, edges are straight lines that connect those points, and faces are the flat surfaces enclosed by those edges. In 3D modeling, Faces are often triangular, but they can be any shape. Meshes are really important. They enable everything, from 3D modeling and simulation to video games. And they can be very detailed, including animations that simulate things like the effect of wind or movement on clothing. Detailed meshes can have millions of faces. Artists and animators need to adapt those very dense meshes into a simpler form that has enough detail to be realistic, but with as few faces as possible. And increasingly, transformer models are being used to generate those details, similar to the way large language models generate sequences of text. Okay. Here I am at the Rodin website. I'll input a text prompt that says, Pink Hippopotamus Ballerina Character with White Tutu. And voila, there's our character. Now we'll generate that. And we'll download it as an OBJ file. Now, here's the Sketchfab website, which is a place where we can look at 3D objects from any angle, like this one on their landing page. So, I'll upload my file and have a look. Yep, looks great. But the issue is, it's very dense. This would be very complicated to animate, so it needs to be simplified. Here's what that process looks like before and after. Now, Let's zoom in a bit. We can see that this object is made up of triangles, which is the usual situation. And the way this data gets recorded today is that the information is encoded for all three points of every triangle, even though the triangles actually touch each other. So actually the location of those points is getting encoded multiple times once for each triangle they're connected to. Look at this point, for example. It's connected to eight different triangles. So the XYZ coordinates of that point get encoded eight times by current methods, one for each of those triangles. Thinking about it logically, that's not very computationally efficient. So along comes Mesh Anything V2. What this method does is build out the shape by always seeking to find and encode an adjacent face that shares an edge. This approach requires only one additional point to be added to the sequence, because the rest of the information is already connected to the previous shape, like this. That's pretty smart. And here's what we know from the paper. First. This version was trained for four days straight using 32 GPUs. After that, it was tested on the Objiverse test set, which is a widely used data set consisting of millions of 3D objects. A key result from the test was that this new approach required only about half as many tokens to represent the same information as before, which resulted in a fourfold reduction in the memory requirement to achieve the same task, which allowed 
mesh anything to double the maximum number of faces it can handle on a single object to 1600 as compared to 800 for current methods. So, how good are the objects it makes? There are seven different measures of quality that are used to answer that question, which you can see listed here. But let's apply the pink hippopotamus ballerina test and see how that turns out. You can see the code I've already run to install Mesh Anything v2. I've created a directory called Rodin Result, and I've uploaded Ballerina Hippo there. Let's check to be sure it's there. Okay. Now, you can see that I ran the code that's looking in the Rodin Result folder, transforming the object to a less dense version and placing the resulting mesh in a folder called Mesh Output. And you can see that it's finished its work and dropped a new object in there called Ballerina Hippo Gen. Let's take a look. There's the Mesh Output folder. There's the folder ending in 5302. That's the one we want. Yep. Ballerina Hippo Gen. So we'll download that. Now, let's take a look at this on Sketchfab. Well, our poor little Ballerina Hippo is a bit worse for the wear, I'd say. Let's compare before and after, side by side. Mm -hmm. Poor little ballerina. In fact, you can see the final words of the paper here. It says, although there's a large improvement over V1, the accuracy of mesh anything V2 is still insufficient for industrial applications. More efforts are needed. Okay, noted. But that's the way it is. By the time this approach is fully out of beta and into production, you won't need a video like this to tell you about it. By then, it will be old news. What happens is, if we make an effort like we did just now, we'll be in a better position to skate to where the puck is going, in the words of Wayne Gretzky. And that's the idea. In this case, I'd say that this new computational approach is brilliant, and surely, we'll quickly see improvements that build on that foundation. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and see you next time.